Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Friday, March 27th, 2015, around 5, 12 in the morning in Bellwork, Massachusetts. Raining out this morning. Uh, it's about 42 degrees, getting a lot of the snow melt with the fog. Some news to report, the Boston Bruins lost to the Anaheim Ducks by the score of 3-2 in overtime, but they get a point. They're now tied with the Ottawa Senators for the last wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. The New York Rangers clinched the playoff spot by beating the Senators, which is good. The Hamburglar is now is got like a lot of goals led up last night, and also that's good. Also, Kentucky is now 37 and all. Other teams going to the Elite League eight are Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and Arizona. And 27 years ago today, Macho Man Randy Savage won the WWE title against um, Ted DiBiase in the finals of the Wrestle 4 Mania tournament, which was, it was unbelievable. And happy 59th birthday to Dale Arnold, host of Dale and Harley on Sports Radio WEI in Boston and the host of the Boston Bruins games. Well, my next subject is my review of WrestleMania 15. WrestleMania 15 was held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the uh, Wells Fargo Center. It was the first union center back then. The main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin against The Rock and was for the WWE title title it was a it was a it was the granddaddy of all pay-per-views it was the 15th version and calling the action for wrestlemania 15 were michael cole because jim ross still had bell's had bell's palsy but he called the main event and jerry the king lala before the wrestlemania pay-per-view they had two matches on sunday night heat the first one was jackie with Terry Reynolds facing off against Ivory, and this this match was only about a minute or so. J Jackie won with a roll up, and um, Terry threw a cigar in Ivory's face. And the other match was a kind of a battle royal, with the stipulation that the final two participants who would win, who were in the battle royal, would be a tag team to face off against. Um, the tag team champions on the pay-per-view, which was Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. The final two wrestlers were D'Lo Brown and Test. O also in it were the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Two Crew, the DOA, Midian, Viscera, and a couple of others. And now, here was the matches that were on the WWE WrestleMania 15 pay-per-view, which, which um, was opened by... Boys to Men Senior in America to be beautiful. The first match was for the WWE Hardcore Championship. It was Billy Gunn, who was the reigning Hardcore Champion at the time. He was in a triple threat match against Al Snow. Everybody wants head. Everybody needs head. And also Hardcore Holly. This match was, you know, a typical Hardcore match, about seven hit minutes. Hardcore Holly pinned um, Al Snow with, for the one, two, three, after Billy Gunn hit him with the famous, uh, unbelievable, this match was, you know, a typical hardcore match, and I'm very surprised that Billy Gunn did not retain the hardcore championship. The next match was for the WWE World Tag Team Championships. It was, um, Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett with their manager, Deborah. Deb was known for a puppies. That's another name for breast that Jerry the King Lawler would say. And they faced off against um, Test and D'Lo Brown um, with Ivory in the corner. I'm very surprised this was a face and a heel as a tag team that they didn't get along. This match was only about three minutes long. long. Jeff Jarrett wins with a roll up and help with a missile drop kick by Owen Hart on test afterwards. Test and D'Lo Brown were fighting and stuff like that. This was, you know, not a great tag team match. I'm very surprised Owen and and Jeff Jarrett didn't get like a kind of a legitimate tag team to, f to defend the titles against. The next match was for the... It was the brawl for all. It was... um. 
Bada Bean facing off against Pot Gun. And they had judges. The referee for this match was Vinny Paluzzo, who was a boxer. And they had the judges for, for it were Chuck Wimplum. And they had Kevin Looney and the WWE Hall of Famer, Guerrero Monsoon. But this was like the last time Guerrero Monsoon was on television because he was suffering from serious health problems and stuff. And he looked awfully, you know, thin and weak and sick. He was, you know, fading because he was battling diabetes the last time Guerrero Monsoon was on television. And then he passed away in, in October of 1999. But anyway, but it being beat, um, Black gun in about 47 seconds in the first first round. This was an awful thing. This shouldn't have been on the pay-per-view. The next match was for the Intercontinental title. It was a fatal four-way elimination match. It was the Road Dog Jesse James, who was the current Intercontinental Championship, facing off against Val Venus and Ken Shamrock and Gold Dust with the blue meaning Meanie and Ryan Shamrock in his corner. Ryan Shamrock was allegedly the storyline sister of Ken Shamrock, but in real life, at the time, Ken Shamrock and Ryan Shamrock were really dating. And this was, you know, this was a, you know, a, you know, a decent match. Ken Shamrock and Val Venus got double disqualifications, double count out around eight minutes and afterwards Ken Shamrock snapped and he did the belly to belly suplex on Gold Dust and Road Dog Jesse James and then and Road Dog pinned Gold Dust for the one, two, three to retain the intercontinental title and stuff like that. The next match was to determine the special guest referee for the title match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. It was the big show with Vince McMahon or Mr. McMahon against Mankind, Mick Foley. And this was a back and forth match. The ending had like Big Show deliver choke slam after choke slam and getting himself disqualified. He threw Mankind through chairs and stuff. And after the match, Vince McMahon gets irate because Mankind's now the special guest referee for the title match. Mankind was taken out on a stretcher. And Vince McMahon slaps the Big Show in the face, and Big Show gets mad. He gets mad, and then he attacks Vince McMahon, and then he uh, and and the Big Show's arrested. Big Show turned face and stuff like that. And after the match, this was kind of a horrible match. I think um, the next match was Kane facing off against. Um, Triple H in a grudge match. Kane was with China. Because in China, and before the match, the, the San Diego chicken came came down and attacked Kane, and they ripped up the Kane ripped up the San Diego chicken match, and it was Pete Rose, and Kane delivered a tombstone to Pete Rose against second straight year, and then this was about an eleven minute match of some brawling stuff, and Kane and Triple H wins by disqualification. China helps out and. The loves of oh, both to Kane and Triple H in China are reunited. The next match was for the dub for the WWE Women's Championship. It was Sable who was to just turn heel and stuff. She was facing a off against Tori. The build up to this match was Tori was Sable's biggest fan who was interfering in her matches and stuff, kind of like stalking her. Um, Sable didn't like the, the appreciation she got from Tori and like just turned heel on her. Tori like had like the uh, goddamn awful wrestling suit and this was maybe about a seven minute match. S Sable won with interference by Nicole Bass who was in ECW at the time and she attacked um, Tori and Sable won with the Sable Bomb one, two, three. The next match was for the WWE European Championship. It was um, Shane McMahon, the current WWE European Championship against X-Pac. And before the match, X-Pac was kind of attacked by the Stooges, Pat Patterson, Jerry Briscoe, but he 
survive the attack and stuff, and it was a back and forth match. Tess tried to interfere, but he, but um, X Pac prevented that. But then Triple H and China come down, and they thought like Triple H and China would help out X Pac, but um, Triple H turns on X Pac by delivering the pedigree and joins Corporation. Shane McMahon beats him for the one. Two, three, and retaining a European Championship, and then the whole DX comes down, and Kane and tries to attack the Corporation and stuff, but um, the Corporation beats them up, and then there's a hen. X Park is livid, and DX is livid with the old dog Jesse James, badass killer Billy Gunn. They lose their leader, but you know they had to turn to a boy heel at this point. The next match was the hell in the cell match between The Undertaker with Paul Bella and the big boss man. And at this time, The Undertaker formed the, the Ministry of Darkness, which included Edge, Christian, um, Gangrel, Midian, Viscera, and the APA, the, the Acolytes, it was Ron, I mean, Veluk, and Bradshaw, I didn't like the the Undertaker having goons like a, a faction, corporate ministry. I mean, the ministry, because he was mo, mo, kind of a loner and stuff. And he faced off against a big boss man who was part of the million dollar. I mean, the, the corporation. In this match, the Hell in the Cell match was goddamn awful. It was probably the worst Hell in the Cell match ever. The Undertaker beats big boss man, pinning him one, two, three. Afterwards, the some of the ministry members hang um, the big boss man up with a noose and when they left the cage they bring the big boss man with it. It was an awful goddamn Garmin Hell in the Cell match. And the final match was for the WWE Championship. It was the it was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus a against the rock Vince McMahon comes down he thinks he's going to be the special guest referee because um, mankind can't do it because he's in the hospital supposedly but WWE Commissioner Shawn Michaels orders Vince McMahon to leave and he brings down WWE senior official um, Earl Hepner and Jim Ross was calling the Wrestlemania um, 15 main event because it was ordered by Stone Cold Steve Austin and stuff like that. Jim Ross was off of television because he had a he had an attack of Bell's palsy and stuff during like late 98, early 1999 and Michael Cole was filling in for him and you know they tried to do it like that little heel turn for Jim Ross in March of 1999 with Dr. Death Steve Williams and stuff like that. There was a rumor Dr. Death Steve Williams was going to be on the WrestleMania 15 card somewhere but you know there was also I heard this rumor I don't know how true it, it was that Jim Ross was supposed to face Vince McMahon for WrestleMania 15 with like the special guest referee like Jerry the King Lala that if if like Jim Ross won he would get his job back if Vince won it JR would be like fired and Dr. Death would be fired but this, I heard like Dr. Death was supposed to turn heel, join the corporation, like attack everybody, even Lala, who who would try to be like, he, like helping out Vince, and he would just attack him, and then this would lead to a monster put with, with um, Steve, against Stone Cold Steve Austin, but I heard something like um, Dr. Death worked too stiff, and they just canceled that match, but... That would have been an awful match, in my opinion, even though I wanted to see JR and Vince Russell, but never happened. But anyway, the, the main event was Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was the uh, who was the challenger facing off against The Rock. And, uh, and this was an awesome match, back and forth, back and forth. Vince McMahon comes down and attacks Earl Hepner, and then Vince and The Rock beat up on Stone Cold and stuff like that. And and Mankind comes down in and helps out and gives a manable claw to Vince and then Stone Cold gives a stunner to the lock and 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 like 
Earl Hebner, count one, two, three. Stone Cold Steve Austin's the WWE champion for the third time after the match. He gives Vince McMahon a stunner, falls beyond this, and the crowd goes wild and stuff like that. And this match, this match was pretty good. My overall grading for this WrestleMania was a kind of an average WrestleMania, a five. A lot of the matches here, like, were like not too great and stuff like that. The main event with Austin and The Rock will probably save this card from being a total disaster. Other, the, the other matches were, you know, you know, not very great and stuff like that. And it, it was it was an average WrestleMania pay-per-view. It, it should have been better. It should have been better, in my opinion. And I'll be... I'll be, tomorrow I'll be reviewing WrestleMania 16, well, they called it WrestleMania 2000 from Anaheim, California at the Arrowhead Pound, which was Honda Center in, in Anaheim, California. I'll be back later, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter with two more video blogs. The first video blog will be about the history of the NBA on TNT and TBS Turner. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about person I profile about the manager of Brock Lesnar, WWE champion, Mr. Paul Heyman, who is the former owner of ECW, and everybody's a Paul Heyman guy, and I am a Julie Bratton guy. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. See you later.